Hello everyone, let's look at some quadratic applications, specifically some vertical motion problems. This is the first video of two, and tonight you just have to watch the first video, unless you want to watch both, if I have them uploaded. And then tomorrow you'll watch the part two, which will include the maximum and minimum value problems on the worksheet that you'll get tomorrow in class. Okay, so for the vertical motion problems, we have the formulas h equals negative 16t squared plus vt plus s. And this is whenever we are using um, our height is in feet. And we have a similar equation or formula for when our equation is in, I'm sorry, when our situation is using the units meters. So for using meters, we want to use the negative 4.9t squared plus vt plus s. h in both of these, well, all of the letters represent the same thing in each of the problems. h will be the height above the ground at any given time. T will be the time in seconds, and S will be the initial height, as in when time is zero, like basically when the stopwatch started. For V, the initial velocity, that's when T equals zero. We have three different options. The keywords that we're looking for is if it's dropped, the initial velocity is zero, so that middle term goes away. If it's positive, that means that the object was projected upward, and if V is negative, if it has a minus sign in front of it, then this object was projected downward or thrown downward. The problem will tell you specifically which one, um, if it was dropped, projected upward, or downward. So then you'd be able to figure out what the value for V would be in your equation. So note that the graph of a vertical motion problem is not the path of the object. It simply is telling you a height um, at a given time. So time elapsed versus the height above the ground. To see the path, you would have to know some extra information, but for now, just know it's telling us about the height versus the time versus the height. So for each of the following problems, the first step will always be to write the appropriate quadratic function of height, h, in terms of time, t. Round answers to the nearest hundredth when necessary. So let's get started. On number one, we have a football is kicked off a tee on the ground upward with an initial velocity of 63 feet per second. So let's start out by writing the function. So here we have h of t, we'll always pretty much go with h, so height at any given time t. That's not h times t, it's kind of like f of x, this is like h of t. Okay, so this is in feet. So since we know that it's in feet, we're going to use the equation that had the feet as the units, which was the negative 16t squared plus vt plus s. So you have negative 16t squared. The next part is plus vt. So because it's upward, that means we're going to have a positive v value. And then the initial velocity was 63. So we'll have plus 63t. And then plus s, which is our initial height. Well, here it was kicked um, off a t on the ground. So that means the initial height is 0 since it started on the ground. So there's our function. So for 1a, how high will the football be after 0.8 seconds? That's the time value, and it's asking for the height, which is a y value. So we just need to plug that in for t. So h of 0.8 will be negative 16 times 0.8 squared plus 63 times 0.8. And that means we'll have a height of 40.16 feet. So at 0.8 seconds, the football will be 40.16 feet in the air. Part B asks when, so we're looking for t, um, when the football is 50 feet above the ground. So we're given a height, so we're looking for if the height is 50, we're solving for t. So we'll leave this as negative 16t squared plus 63t. And here we're going to solve for t. I think it's best to subtract the 50 over. So you have 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 63t minus 50. Let's go ahead and use our calculator to figure out when the football is 50 feet above the ground. By taking this equation that we've now set equal to 0, and we're going to solve for t when y is equal to 0. So in other words, we're looking for the x-intercepts. 
Okay, so looking at our calculator, I opened up a graph, and I've typed into f1 of x, negative 16x squared plus 63x minus 50. Please make sure that you're using the variable x, because that's what the calculator understands. I'm going to hit enter. And so here's our graph. I'm wanting to see when is this equation equal to 0, because that's what I wrote down. I had negative 16, so on and so on, equal to 0. So in other words, I'm going to be looking for the zeros. So I'll go to menu. Analyze graph, zeros, and I'll have to do this twice. So click on the left and right for the first one, and then I'll do this again, menu, analyze graph, zero, click on the left and right for the second one. So, oops, my two zeros are at 1.1 and 2.84. So those are actually the times when the ball is 50 feet above the ground. For the next one, it's asking, when will the football be at its maximum height? So if we had the negative 16t squared plus 63t, oops, we're using this equation to find the maximum. So you could either use algebra and use the negative b over 2a which actually really isn't that bad of an idea. So let's try that. So x equals, remember the maximum height or any maximum value will occur at the vertex. And so since it's asking for when, that's a t value. So really instead of using an x, I should use a t. So let's do that. t equals, again we're going to use that negative b over 2a. So we get negative 63 over 2 times a, which is negative 16. We get negative 63 divided by negative 32. We'll get 1.97 seconds. By the way, you could also go to your graphing calculator and look at the vertex and get the x value of the vertex since the win is time, which is our x value. What is its maximum height? Again, you could look at the maximum on your graph, but since we already know the x value, for the vertex, this what is its maximum height is the y value for the vertex. So we could just plug that in, negative 16 times 1.97 squared plus 63 times 1.97. And we'll get a height of 62 feet. So its maximum height will be 62 feet. Okay, the next part, when will it hit the ground? So when it hits the ground, that means that the height is zero. So we'll take our original equation, 16, negative 16t squared plus 63t, set that equal to zero. So we're trying to figure out when will, at what time, at what t value will be, will the height be equal to zero? So let's check out the calculator. Okay. So here's my function, negative 16x squared plus 63x. I'm using the x instead of the t again. And this time I took out that minus 50 because we're no longer looking at when it's 50 feet above the ground. We're looking for whenever it hits the ground. So our regular equation, and we're going to look for when that is equal to 0. So we're going to look at the x-intercepts. So go to Menu, Analyze, 0. Click on the left and the right. Do it for each point. So I have two x-intercepts. One is at 0, one is at 3.94. The question specifically said when will it hit the ground. So not when it was kicked off the ground, uh, but whenever it hits the ground. So really I only needed to look at the second x-intercept, which is at 3.94. So it will have a height of 0 at 3.94 seconds, which represents when it hit the ground. So for the next one, when will it be 70 feet above the ground? Well, if you wanted to, you could sit there and set it all up. So we'd have 70 equals negative 16t squared plus 63t. And you could solve, but this is almost a trick question. Because when will it be 70 feet above the ground? Well, the answer is actually it will never be 70 feet above the ground. Well, how did I know that? Well, it's pretty easy. Look back at question D. What is the maximum height? Well, the maximum height is at 62 feet. 
So it can't reach 70 feet if the highest that it gets is 62. So our answer would be never. Let's look at the next problem. Okay, here we have a tennis ball at an initial height of 1.5 meters. It's hit upward with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second. So the first thing we must always do is give ourselves an equation to work with. So here we'll have h of t equals, here it's in meters, so we need to use the one that has the negative 4.9 t squared. Next is the vt. Here it was told, it's told that we hit it upward. So that means it's still a positive v, and the initial velocity is 25. So we'll have plus 25t, and then the initial height is 1.5, so we'll have plus 1.5. So A, how high will the tennis ball be after 1.2 seconds? That's a value for time. We're looking for how high, the y value, so Let's plug 1.2 in to our function. So you get negative 4.9 times 1.2 squared plus 25 times 1.2 plus 1.5. So the height at 1.2 seconds will be 24.4 meters. Part B. When will the tennis ball be 8 meters above the ground? So that is a height, so I'm going to set that for the h. So I'll have 8 equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 25 t plus 1.5. To make this easier on myself, I'm going to subtract the 8 over so I can set it equal to 0. 0 equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 25 t. And then 1.5 minus 8 is a negative 6.5. So now instead of having it equal to 8, I have it equal to 0, and I can solve for t when h is 0. So let's go over to the calculator. Okay, so here's my function. Again, I'm using x instead of t, and I've already typed it in. Oops, let's make that minus 6.5. <laughs> All right, so this is whenever it's equal to 0. I enter my function, and here it is. So now I'm looking for when is this thing equal to zero, so I'll use menu, analyze, zero. On the lower I click on the left, upper I click on the right of that point, and let me do the same thing for the other one. Menu, analyze, zero. Left for lower, right for upper. Okay. So what I have here is at 0.275 seconds and at 4.83 seconds there will be a height of 0 for this function, but that means that whenever this was 8 meters above the ground it has the same value. So this tells us when the ball was 8 meters above the ground because we've adjusted our function to be equal to 0 even though it started out as 8. hope that makes sense. So here I've written my answers down and I've also rounded to the hundredths place since up at the top it told us to round to the hundredths place when necessary. So 0.28 seconds and 4.83 seconds. Part C. When will the tennis ball be at its maximum height? So again we're going to use that negative 4.9 t squared. We're going to use that original equation that we started with. And looking for the maximum height you can do the negative v over 2a, but let's use the calculator on this one and see what we can find. 